congratulations on this album. We've been playing singles off this album and our listeners have been absolutely loving it. So congratulations. Thank you very much. We had a great time making it. Now, mate, I read a, a, a recent um, quote from you that said that you would never have thought two decades ago that this band would still be going today. So I was wondering if you could take us back to when this band first started out. What what were your thoughts at that time? Uh, well, when I first met Disney, was about eighteen years, about nineteen years ago. We I met Disney, and then we started playing about eighteen years ago. Um, I met him at a place called the Cat Club, and he was recording some tracks on a, a record I was doing with that band, Beautiful Creatures, that I had just joined. And we kind of met through that process. And then when I asked him about, you know, because I, I, I grew up on the East Coast, you know, near New York, in a, in a state called Connecticut, um, and um, you know, I saw the connections back there. They wanted to book some shows with anyone I could you know, bring from the West Coast, so I kind of, you know, migrated a lot of these guys to the East Coast, including Dizzy, and Dizzy's one stipulation of doing these shows where we couldn't be the Dizzy Reed band or whatever, it was got to be Hookers and Blow, and I said, sure, well, yeah, sounds good to me, and he had the logo designed, and we booked the shows, and they, they actually were attended very well, and I said, all right, I think we're on to something here, but I, I never thought we would get to the point where we're doing bus tours and touring internationally or any of that, and it's all happened over the past 18 years, and we have a record out now. I mean, it's kind of crazy, you know? So tell us a little bit about this record. How did this record come about? Because I think your fans have been have been waiting for a record for a long, long time now, so how did this one come about? Well, we kind of vowed never to, A, write music, or B, make a record, so we broke one vow. Um, but it's still all covers, so we're, we're 50-50. Um, <laughs> but, um, it just, you know, it, it just kind of happened organically, you know, and, um, you know, when, when Golden Robot offered to do, to let us, you know, to, to, you know, do the deal and said we can have complete artistic control and complete freedom, that was very attractive to me because I don't, I, one thing I hate are these labels, um, that try to micromanage your music and have, you know, certain audio stipulations and they want to. You know, you know, a lot of these guys are field musicians themselves who want to try to kind of play into the process. I didn't want that, and that's what attracted me to this deal. So we kind of, we were all, one thing about Hook This and Blow, and especially me and Dizzy, actually all of us, and Mike and Kelly, like Johnny Kelly, and all everyone in the camp, if you tell us not to do something, we're going to do it ten times. That's just how we are. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that no one, was, no one was leaning over our shoulder or, you know, trying to microproduce the record made it a lot easier to, to, to deliver the the quality that we were able to deliver, you know? Yeah. There's nothing worse than these, these, these albums that come out that are like a mishmash of guys for a bunch of bands that are clearly just a quick cash grab. They'll never tour. They'll never play shows. It is an all-star lineup that each guy, you know, signs on to do to pay their rent that month. It comes and goes. This is like a legitimate thing that stands on its own, and I'm proud of that. N- not being micromanaged like that by a label as well, did that also kind of make the process more relaxing? Like, there was no stress or anything like that That's, attached to it? No, there was no, nothing at all, because you got to keep in mind, I mean, we started this thing in 2019, the recording process, and then we got hit with, you know, Guns N' Roses had a big tour, Quiet Riot's always working, then the pandemic... And, and nobody sweat, you know, everyone just kind of went with the flow and it happened when it happened. That it, it, it enabled us to, to you know, go, take our time and really relax and really hone in on dialing in the parts and make it perfect. And, you know, home studios, when you have six months to do eight guitar solos, you're going to do your best, you know. So, yeah. Um, you know, the, the pandemic also delayed the release as well. So, you know, it all kind of worked out because it gave us time to kind of pause, reach, you know, recharge their batteries and, you know, go back and listen to it a second time and we ended up recutting a lot of stuff that we had recorded in 2019 and 2020 i found that talking to a lot of bands over the past few months and they've said to me that the pandemics almost ended up being a blessing in disguise because it's given them a chance to work on an album that probably wouldn't have happened otherwise but it's also taught them to go right back to the basics with their music is that something that you feel that you've learned as well yeah, well, I, I, my main thing is I never I never stopped to learn how to work Pro Tools and get a home studio. And when everything shut down here in America last March, we I had to. I had to go into the, you know, go, I called the producer and said, all right, what do I got to get? And he walked me through it on the phone, the whole thing. Um, and uh, I, got, I got a little home studio now up and running. So it kind of forced me to learn, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, they say. And I was forced to learn how to record myself at home, and you know. 
I'm yeah. now I'm banging, doing sessions all the time, banging shit out. It's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm not going to say I'm grateful for the pandemic, but I'm grateful for the time to take a breath and, you know, reevaluate how you do certain things. And it definitely, I think it gave a lot of people another perspective on things for sure. Yeah. For the young musicians that are out there, what's the best thing about being able to record at home and what's the worst thing about it? Well, the best thing is you can really take your time. You don't have the pressure of, you know, eating up studio time financially. You don't have a producer who doesn't want to be there. You can do it at your own pace. The downside is you don't have the pressure of a producer who doesn't want to be there and be watching the clock. So, you know, it enables you to, to work at your own pace, but it's also good to have that pressure on you when you're starting off to kind of hone your chops in and whatnot. And to have other people in the room to bounce ideas off of. Because everyone loves to the smell of their own farts, you know? Yeah, You don't yeah. want to... <laughs> sorry to put it that way, but you don't want to... Uh, <laughs> everyone thinks, you know their stuff's perfect and then until they get a second or third opinion and that's what the producer or the other guys in the band are for and if you're all in a room together they're going to tell you hold on try that note or try this if you're home you tend to get you fall and then you get demo ideas you fall in love with your original demo and you gotta you should do both you should you should be able to function in a studio situation with other human beings there and work at home and then take the best from both scenarios yeah. Now talking about the pandemic, what is it like there for you guys at the moment? Are you able to get out and do some shows? Because we've just been put back into lockdown here and by the numbers that are coming through today, it sounds like we're going to be in lockdown for a while. But what's it like there for you at the moment? Um, it's 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 not locking down per se, but some shows are canceling, some shows are going on. We've, we've been pretty lucky. We've, only, we've had a lot of cancellations, but not cancellations, postponements. Um, and a lot of the shows we're doing now are makeup shows from last year. Um, and we've, we've been pretty lucky so far, but it changes daily. I mean, I wake up, the next, I wake up tomorrow and find out half the venues now require a vaccine, and that's going to alienate half the people, and they're not going to sell tickets. So food, it's all up to me here. But, you know, right now we're working pretty much every weekend. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this album. I, w- I wanted to go into the nitty gritty of it because there are so many amazing tracks on this album. So how did you guys settle on what tracks you wanted to cover for this album? Um, we It was actually very easy. We, we wrote down a list of about 20 songs and then whittled it down to the 12 you see there on the record. Um, Everyone kind of, everyone had their input, and um, it's a very diverse, eclectic group of fans, as you can see. We're, you know, we're really happy with it. So, so talk us through those steps, because I, I always love it. I love covers. I'm always grown up loving covers, but... I know that there's a th- there has to be a formula to it because you want to take a classic track and and make it your own, but it also at the same time make it recognizable to people that love that track. How do you go about sitting down and doing a cover like this, but but making it your own? Um, you know, a lot of these songs we play live, and a couple of them we've never played at all live. So you know, the, the main the main foundation of the band is Johnny Kelly on drums. You know, he, he went in and kind of laid the grid out for us. And he put his, the way he plays kind of dictated how the song went. Because you know, the drums and bass were done first. And I did a scratch rhythm guitar along with it and went back and kind of dialed it in to fit more with it. Um, but yeah, no, it, it really all started with the way Johnny laid things down and kind of set things back a bit and made him, made him swing and have more of a big rock feel than, you know, like if you listen to the, the Eddie Money cover, it's, it sounds like a hard rock band playing Eddie Money. I mean, it's still almost the same tempo and same co- arrangement and same chord progressions and everything, but it's it's got it's got beefier, you know. We kind of did that with all of them. Yeah. Now I've got to ask this question because you said before that you all brought songs to the table. Which of the tracks did you bring to the table, and is there a track out there that you would love to cover one day that you haven't covered? Um, I'd love to I'd love to figure out how way to cover Ram Jam by Black Daddy. I mean, it's just yeah. I do it like. Do it, do it properly, not like a Pro Tools version of it, but actually learn how to play it for real. I mean, that song's a mess. I love it. Um, let's see. My The one, the, the Eddie Money one was definitely my call. Um, the Body Count cover was brought in by myself and Dizzy's wife, Nadja. Other than that, no one in the band had ever heard of it. You know, it's such an obscure thing. Um, that's pretty much, those are my two favorites that I kind of, you know, lobbied for. Dizzy was all about the Stones, rocks off. I'd never even heard that song before, so he educated me on that. You know, it was it was a, it was a, you know it was a, definitely a a melting pot, if you will. You know. 
Yeah, I have to ask now, have you heard Spiderbait's cover of Black Betty? We've got a band here in Australia called Spiderbait who did an absolutely sensational cover of Black Betty a few years ago and it ended up becoming their highest selling single. I don't know if you've ever heard that. No, no. What's, what's Spiderbait? They're called Spiderbait, yep. Spiderbait, okay. Yep. So, yeah, and no, I check it out. That. It's absolutely amazing. And an amazing video clip, too. It was actually um, the, the drum kit because uh, Spider Bait's lead singer is the drummer, and it was all done on the back of a car. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic oh, video nice. clip as well. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, going back to what we were talking about, about going in and doing a cover, you just mentioned there that one of the songs that you hadn't even heard before, does that actually make it easier to cover when you don't really know the song, or is it easier to go in and, and do a cover of a song that you know so, so well? You know, it, 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 that's a good question. I, I don't really, I, every song's different. The Stones one... With, you know, it's it, those songs are you know those those tunings, the open tunings they use. I mean, I, I found a way to play it in regular tuning, but that was definitely I we adjusted that a little bit to fit with what we do. Um, but yeah, no, it's when you've never heard a song before, it's kind of like you're you're learning someone else's original song for the first time. You know, when you join a band, so it's kind of you know, no matter what, I we try to put our own spin on things. You know. Yeah. Do you when you do that? Do you ever look up what the song was about or anything like that? Like, does that help out or does that make it worse sometimes no you know what i watched the video a couple times now this you know if, if there is a video some of these older songs don't even have videos um and then just just do my thing to it you know try to keep try to put try to keep it within our wheelhouse so to speak and it definitely worked you know yeah. Now we had a, a weird case here in Australia a couple of years ago where a band got up on stage and, and did a Kiss cover and didn't realize that Kiss actually were in the club that night and saw them do the cover. Have you ever had that happen where the person who wrote the original has turned up? Yeah, actually, with, with Gene Simmons, no, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> um, Hookers and Blow was playing at the Cat Club in 2009 and we... Gene Simmons was at the was next door at the whiskey for his son's showcase or something. And he walked in and stood in front of us, and he had this kind of shitty look on his face. He was not. I don't think he got what we were doing. So I told, turned around to the drummer. I said, "Let's do rock and roll all night." And I sang it, and I can't sing at all. And I'm and hammered, and I'm on the mic. You know, you show us everything you got. Looking right at Gene, and he just he, he bummed him out. I think. So, well, I knew he was there. We did it, we did it, kind of, I don't want to say antagonize him, but after we, after we got done, Dizzy and I walked over to him, and we're all sweaty, and, you know, and, and Dizzy goes to introduce us, and goes, goes, she goes, I know, I'm aware of who you are, I know who you are. He goes, oh, fucking day, he goes, fucking day, dude, and she goes, are you aware you said the F word seven times in one sentence? And Dizzy's like, what the, what, fuck? And Gene just kind of rolled his eyes, just like swearing, apparently. Uh, I always laugh at the fact yeah. that I always laugh at the fact that they um, once entered a cover competition. I think it was for a Kiss. It was the actual members, and they finished second. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is, was, Ace, was Ace in the band? I, I'm not sure. I just remember I remember reading about it in a in a rock history book once, and they all turned up in my full makeup and went up on stage and yeah, got beaten by another Kiss cover band. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty funny. I believe it. <laughs> well, I, I know we got... Wait, but the, the irony is Gene probably bought that band's, you know, he probably bought that band's, well, not trademark, but he probably ended up working for him somehow after that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know we are running out of time very, very quickly. So to wrap up, what would you like to say to everybody out there that that hasn't grabbed a copy of the album or those that already have grabbed a copy? What would you like to say to them as we play another single from the album now? Pick it up. It's it's uh, it's probably it may not be the best rock and roll record we've this year, but it's the only one. Awesome. Well, Alex, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we cannot wait for everything to open back up again, so we might be able to see you guys here in Australia. Yeah, we, uh, we're ta- we're looking at going. We were looking at going down there before the pandemic. So as soon as everything clears up, we'll be down there for sure. 